decomposing uh, mechanism. So here is a reaction between um, ethane and oxygen and according to the equation it says that we need five oxygen molecules to collide with two ethane, ethane molecules for the reaction to occur. Now that gives us an overall picture but it doesn't explain how the reaction occurs. Reactants must collide, they must have the right number of activation energy and they must be in the right orientation. Now most reactions involve a multi-step process and reactions rarely involve more than two molecules. So there's this intermediate species that are formed. A reaction mechanism is the step-by-step -step process by which a reaction occurs. An intermediate that is formed is never part of a balanced chemical equation. It must be formed and then used somewhere else in the equation. So for instance, if we look at the decomposition of ozone, the first step is where ozone decomposes to form a diatomic oxygen and an oxygen atom. Each step in the process is known as an elementary step or an elementary process. So we have O3, that will decompose to O2 and then an O atom. An O atom is an oxygen radical. And then in the second step, that radical reacts with another ozone molecule to form two diatomic oxygens. So the radical is formed and then used up, so it's not present in the overall reaction. The first step is a slow process, so that means it has a high activation energy. Something with a high activation energy will always be the slowest step and it's described as the rate determining step, the RDS. So a pizza shop, what would the rate determining step be in that? Well, making the pizza is pretty quick, but putting it in the oven takes a fair bit of time. The molecularity of an element is how many molecules participate in that step. So if we think back to just before, the first step was unimolecular because it had one molecule and step two was bimolecular, two molecules were needed. So a unimolecular reaction has a molecularity of one, bimolecular molecularity of two, termolecular has a molecularity of three. If we go through this simple little table, we can see the different types of molecularities for the different types of reactions. You may be asked to write the equation from a reaction mechanism. So here is a reaction, A plus B squared goes to AB plus B. The step in this case is a one-step reaction, so the rate would equal K, concentration of A times concentration of B2. So that would be the rate equation. If we have something with a two-step process, then we need to know what is the rate determining step. The rate equation will always come from the rate determining step. So the rate will be equal to K times the concentration of A times by the concentration of B. If we have a reaction which has a mechanism which is a two-step mechanism and the rate determining step is the second step, then things are a little bit more complicated. Because we've got the formation of this intermediate, which won't show up in the reaction, that's going to have an impact on our rate equation. So what we need to do here is to think about what that, in, that intermediate was formed from. So the rate will be equal to K times NO, because NO is definitely in the rate determining step. But then this O thing, well that's come from the decomposition of NO2. So we've got to track that back and the rate becomes KNO2 squared. We might also be asked to write a mechanism, and in this case we're given the rate equation, which is KN2O squared. So if we need to do this type of question, then a one-step reaction would be simply just N2O, breaking down into N2 and O2. That's the rate determining step, and equals the rate equation. A two-step reaction will form, we will need to form an intermediate, and that intermediate will need to react with something to give us the correct rate equation. So what tends to happen in a question like this is we form an intermediate, so N2O would break down into N2 plus O. The O would then need to react with another 
N2O molecule, with the rate determining step being the second step to form N2 and O2, that would give us the correct rate equation. So if we have a two-step mechanism and we need to come up with that mechanism, always think about the chemical decomposing to a radical. So if we were to write the K value, it would be rate equals K NO squared. So here we have A plus B plus C goes to ABC, and we need to write a two-step mechanism which is consistent with the rate equation rate equals K A B. So we're going to form an intermediate again. So we have A plus B going to AB. That's got to be my rate determining step because then my rate equation would be just K concentration of A times concentration of B. And then in the second step, we have AB reacts with C to form ABC. If we introduce a catalyst into the mixture, that's going to have an impact on the rate determining step and it will lower the activation of that rate determining step. The rate determining step will always have the highest activation energy because it is the slowest process in the mechanism. So the catalyst will affect all of the delta H's, but it will have the biggest impact on the rate determining step. So the catalyst reduces the activation energy and speeds up the reaction by lowering the activation energy of the rate determining step. Okay, some top tips. Uh, the designing the mechanism can be challenging, so practice that. The rate determining step is the key.